Hello beautiful soul. Welcome to have tea with me. I haven't made one of these videos in such a long time. So make sure you grab your tea, your coffee and settle in because I need to talk with my friends and that is what you guys are to me. I know so many of you say that you love just taking a moment, relaxing and having a tea with me. So welcome and thank you for being here. Make sure you take a nice deep breath and a sip of tea. <laughs> So today I just finished filming my third Crystal Gem Fair video. So it's the third one in a row that I've done. And it's such a surreal moment because it marks, you know, a whole other spiral, a whole other year of being here on YouTube. And it's had me reflecting on the last three years and the things that I've been posting and how I want to show up on YouTube. And so much has changed, but a big theme that's come up for me, and it's also come up in my Patreon because I did a tarot reading for the month of November. And there was this theme of the past and allowing the past to not hold us back in the in the present moment and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit I guess and just have that sort of reflective moment with you if you will I think it's that saying you know you can visit the past but you shouldn't stay there you know we can reflect on what's happened we can go into that moment and heal a piece of us if it's a little bit hurting in the now moment but we can't get stuck there and i think for such a long time i really have been letting the past hold me back um i've been living too much in the past and not focusing on the future that sort of feeling like something might be around the corner especially when you know that sometimes you go really really good in life and then something intense happens and shakes it all up when stuff is going good it doesn't mean that something bad is going to happen <laughs> and it's okay for everything to be okay um, I'm sure anybody who has anxiety kind of knows that feeling of like when you've gone through a lot in the past You can kind of be like waiting for something to happen because it's like, okay, this feels really good The last time I had this feeling something bad came and and you know really shook me to my core so I've been trying to keep myself very grounded and I think when you don't listen to the advice that the universe brings you events can transpire to get the message through in the physical. And that happened when I've been very ungrounded lately. And yesterday I was running up and down my studio steps to go into the fridge. Actually it was the freezer and grab an ice block like a zooper duper. Uh, and I did it so quickly that as I spun around to come back down the stairs, I actually tripped and fell face first down like three stairs onto the ground. And it was such a shock. It really like was very jarring. And I'm okay, thankfully, like definitely sore and my wrist and my ankles are really sore because they kind of like absorb the brunt of, you know, the fall. But I just kept on thinking about like being brought back down to earth. Like <laughs> I'm so ungrounded that I literally tripped and fell down the stairs and face planted to kind of like wake me up a little bit. Um, and, and I guess it's because I, I am in this space of just like, okay, everything's going really well. What's going to happen? And that's just no way to live. And it really is allowing, you know, the beautiful present moments that we're experiencing now to like slip through our fingers or be tainted by this like negative kind of like intrusive thought in the background that something is like looming overhead, if that makes sense. Because the truth is, in the now moment, who knows what is in the path ahead? But I just need to make sure that I am as grounded, like in absorbing all of the good energy that is in my life currently. So maybe there's something to reflect on within all of that, that either make sure you listen to the guidance and check in with yourself too, like check in with your body. I knew that I was really ungrounded um, and I needed to, to just like, you know, get into myself again. Um, but yeah, don't ignore those little signs from spirit because sometimes uh, it can be a very rude awakening, like falling downstairs. So I've also been feeling the call to get into practices and take action. So for such a long time, I've almost felt very idle. Like there's all these things that I know I want to do. There's all of these things that for years I've wanted to do. 
and I finally have the time, the space and the ability to do them, but I'm just not. Again, I think it's just in that like waiting for something to happen and action is really needed, like that spark, getting into it. And as soon as I started making a little bit of forward movement, everything started to like take place and is like collecting a lot of momentum. So really getting into witchcraft practices that I have let go for such a long time, making ritual oils and salves and vibrational medicine like sprays and things like that for myself. But then ultimately, I definitely would love to sell them as well, because I understand that a lot of people don't have the time and space to create their own things, if that makes sense. There's just been this theme of like, create and do things for you and the rest will follow <laughs> and i don't know if that maybe is needed for you in your life as well but sometimes i think i know i personally like do things for other people create things for other people and i really just need to create them for myself i was in the car having this full conversation with my guides and they were showing me this image of me creating like my spirit dolls my talismans and I realized that a lot of the time I create stuff just in general for another person, but not a specific person in mind. Just like, oh, one day someone will see this and they'll love it and they'll, they'll buy it or they'll feel the call to have it in their life. And my guide sort of showed me that when I do that, when I create kind of for this like other person or just in general create something that I'm sort of not creating anchored into my heart space a lot that I really need to create things. Maybe you could, uh, if you're an artist or you create stuff as well, but create it for me. Something that is fully embodied and coming out of my heart, like a transmission from my heart. That's the image that I was seeing. Hold on, my cat is about to smash something. Calm. God, you're so naughty. He's obsessed with eating my freaking plants and he was about to smash a big glass jar. <laughs> So they were showing me this transmission coming from your heart when you create something that you just love and then it's just like for you, but not actually for you. And when I create something and it's just, I put all of my love and as if it's for me, it's gonna be on my wall or worn around my neck, but then I also choose to put it up on my website or gift it to another person, that it's gonna be so much more potent than the thing that I just was generally creating, if that kind of makes sense. And of course, when you're an artist, there's like creating art for the sake of just creating art, but then there's creating art for healing, creating art that is like vibrational and holds energy within it. So when you're trying to do that, when you're trying to create vibrational art or creations in general, I think that that's a really strong message to actually create it for you. So then it holds like that much more like potent heart space medicine than just like generally creating. So now that I have the time and space to actually create and craft a lot of these things, along with making medicine, vibrational oils and all those sorts of things, I just can't wait to see how it all takes place. A lot of the things that I've been doing lately, as you can see, I've kind of changed my apothecary setup and that is all around the fact that I want to create these salves and these herbal remedies and vibrational medicines. Like I want to have a large, massive, big bench where I can work at things and not feel like kind of crammed in. So you can't really see it and I'm going to make sure I do a proper... Uh, studio tour video soon once everything is properly put away and sorted but I have like way like three times um, the amount of shelves I brought a whole new piece of furniture into this space um, so yeah it's really exciting seeing my space kind of come to where I want it to be I've always been super affected oh sorry I'm so itchy <laughs> Um, I've always been super affected by like the energy of my room I don't know if you're the same you probably are but when things just feel a little bit off, I don't want to be in the space. I don't 
want to create it doesn't flow and yeah for such a long time I've just probably for like at least three months I haven't been feeling the energy flowing in this space so it's really exciting to see it like nearly all come together and I've just been spending so many nights down here and it's already just feeling so magical um so yeah I just can't wait to show you the full tour as well I always have these big, oh, Khan, if you smash those bottles. Dude, you cannot smash my jars. I'll be so cranky with you. This is the troublemaker in question. He is so naughty, oh my God. Anyway, like I was saying, I've been trying to make sure I'm filming and posting a lot of videos and I really have noticed how structure and creating like a routine and being really prepared has allowed my creativity to flow so much where before I had all of this pressure on me like okay it's the beginning of the week I need to get a video up and it just would put all of this like pressure and I wouldn't create at all I would literally just stop I've just reflected on how I create and know that I need to be really well prepared. So I'm trying to create about three to four weeks in advance. And then I get to share early previews with my Patreon members, which is really, really cool. And I've also added a new link in my Patreon. So it's $3.33. And it's just for people who want to support the channel, see a little bit behind the scenes and have some personal updates, but maybe don't want to have like the class videos and the animal and herbal classes and things like that. It's just for, yeah, support. And I've had so many people sign up already and I'm just so grateful. Like I wanted to take this moment, I guess, while we're catching up to say, Thank you for supporting me and the channel. Again, it's really interesting to reflect back three years ago when I began the channel, what I thought it was going to be, what I hoped it would be, and what I thought my life would be. And it's just so dramatically different. I've kind of been in a space of realizing that even though I want to manifest things in my life, I really have no control over uh, what happens along the way and that's okay that sometimes what I think I want for myself isn't actually what is in my best interest for my future self because Samantha three years ago when I started my channel is not me now Samantha three years ago was trying to create and manifest a future for me now that is completely not in alignment with me now <laughs> And so what I've been learning is it's really important to check in with yourself in every moment and really make decisions within your body and your heart and your soul that scream yes. I think that your body knows what is a yes and what is a no, but often when we know something's not good for us, we like create all of these issues and reasons why we have to continue down that path. You know, we don't have boundaries most of the time. A lot of the time it's because of other people and we're letting other people down or we've gotten ourselves into a situation where it feels like we can't get out of it. But when we actually listen to our heart, we know that that's not a yes, it's a, it's a no. And so the more that I live in the moment and go, okay, I need to just create for me now. And yes, I can have these dreams and hopes and aspirations for my future self, but I have to trust that future Samantha in three more years is also going to be living from her heart because how could I right now create a future for myself in the future when I don't even know who I am yet? I haven't been through the things that future me has been through. And that's kind of what I think about with manifestation. Like I look back at three years ago to past Sam and just think, oh girl, you have not been through anything compared to me. Like how are you meant to know what I'm going to want right now? And you're like, you know, all the way back there. So making yes decisions, making sure I feel like, yes, I love this. I feel really good about this. Let's do that. And the things that don't bring me joy, the things that are a no, I know within my body, I know within my heart, lovingly releasing them, making sure I advocate for myself that I don't get myself into situations where I don't want to do something and I'm making myself uh, do it. 
and uh yeah i guess i just have that vision of like i know what i kind of want but it's more like feelings you know like prosperity and happiness and joy not like i want to have this type of business and i want to be driving this car and i want to be living in this town and i want to have this many kids because i don't know if that's what i'm actually going to want for the future and our thoughts and our words are so powerful you will literally start to like weave your future pathway in front of you and you manifest it like we're manifesting all the time you don't have to um sit down and do a manifestation ritual the act of living your life you're always going to manifest things naturally so if some of the things that i've been talking about resonate with you make sure you let me know down below but I definitely think if any of you feel really stagnant and stuck, that piece of advice I would give you is just taking pressure off of yourself and simultaneously moving forward, like taking a step forward, um, because it really only takes a little bit of movement forward for momentum to really build. And then all of a sudden it's this big snowball effect. Callum just called me and now he's outside getting all of our um, bins and stuff together. But yeah, I guess just taking that pressure off yourself. <laughs> but like I was going to say, I for such a long time felt so stagnant, like I could not get anything done or I take one step forward and a million step backs. And I guess, yeah, I had so much pressure on myself to create things or to get stuff done. That I didn't realize that it was actually also keeping me from from doing it. It was like, put it, how can you expect to thrive and to grow if you've got all of this stuff weighing you down? So um, yeah, definitely if you can, try to just release that pressure because before you know it everything will start growing and you'll look back and thank yourself for maybe putting those boundaries in place or saying no to people that are draining your energy so you can thrive and create the life and the things that you want in your life um, for yourself my tea is empty i drunk it all with you <laughs> i hope that you have enjoyed being in this moment with me I just hope to create like a calm, safe little space for you to be in just even for 15 or 20 minutes if I can. And I really want to continue to do these sort of like ah, videos each week where you're just able to, I don't know, find some peace in this freaking crazy, chaotic, bloody world that we are currently living in. Um, so yes, fill up your cup whenever you can. I'm sending you so much love and I'll see you later on this week in my second video because I'm committing. I want to be here twice a week, every week, baby. I want to get this stuff going, get the momentum going. <laughs> and very soon I'm going to give you a proper tour of my new studio. So um, cheers. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video. Hi, my love.